Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I have a serious, serious man crush on Dan Quinn. You know, if this team is going to be successful this year, it's going to be the defense has really got to step up for us. In fact, I dare say that in past years, our biggest problem has been is we haven't had the D in defense in a long time like we used to. You can talk about all the great stars that we've had on the offense from the Michael Irvins, the Emmett Smiths, the um, Drew Pearsons, of course, with the Tony Dorsett's and, of course, um, Troy Aikman and Roger Staubach. But the thing that those teams all had that this team has not had in a long time is a great defense that shuts people down. You know, a couple of years ago, we were losing games that we were scoring and averaging over 32 points a game. You can't win consistently when you have to score more than 32 points a game to win games. It's just not. Now, we have been blessed to have Dan Quinn here as our defensive coordinator um, I don't know if he has aspirations of being a head coach again or not, but somehow, some way, the Cowboys have started building something that is literally incredible on this defense with the young guys. And this defense is extremely young. Uh, when you think that Demarcus Lawrence is the elder statesman on this defense and Leighton Van Der Esch is probably the next oldest guy on there, you're doing some great things that will be building something that will be good for several years. Um, I have not seen Dan Quinn's press conferences, the press conference today, but it is actually online, and I definitely want to see it today because I enjoy Dan Quinn's press conferences more than I enjoy um, listening to Mike McCarthy. Dan Quinn, you know, he is the player's coach. He is that guy that gets down and dirty with the players. He's that guy that will relate to them by using like old school rap, like Run DMC and stuff. So let's get to it. Let's listen to Dan Quinn's press conference here. And let's go. Good to see everyone. It is great and, to see uh, you. Recently, um, you know, you were asked, or I was asked, regarding a player that goes from year one into year two, and that's something I think probably all of you have covered from time to time. I think it's it's absolutely the truth. And we have some players that are making the jump from year one into year two. And I see their trajectory, you know, going, you know, on the way up. I also had said back to them, I think it's very true that it happens for a, for a specific unit going from year one into year two. Mm -hmm. And so for us defensively, it's players, it's coaches, it's roles, uh, it's knowing one another, it's knowing how to communicate more clearly and quickly. When you have that process in place going in for your second lap at it, you get a little tighter, you get a little stronger. And so although it's true from player-wise, year one to year two is usually when the biggest jumps make. I also felt like from a system standpoint, it's usually when you make your best jumps uh, you know, as an offense or a defense or a special teams, just because of that connection player to player, you recognize uh, you're more of an extension of one another. And I certainly feel that from the training camp uh, of this group of, of where we're headed and, and the additions that we've made. Hey, I'm David Moore, Dallas Morning News. With, with that being said, in some ways, is it more difficult? You hear this in golf a lot where you, you go from uh, hundreds down in the you know, upper 80s. Is it more difficult to make that? next jump, which is more incremental than maybe what you made last year? That's a great question. I, and the answer is yes, of course. Like uh, anytime you're really good and you're trying to punch through to the next ceiling to go to the next space, it's a little more challenging. But I think also in a good way, you can get there a little faster because you have a better awareness of all the things that you need to do. And so having a self-awareness, these are the you know one or two things you need to tweak or get better at. In fact, we just did some of this uh, just last week. We went through uh, a good bit of our training camp practices, you know, scrimmage against other teams, what things before we even got into our game plan preparation that we want to just nail. And so I think that's always the case as you're trying to refine, get a little bit better. And we weren't talking about, you know, these big jumps. We were talking about some specific things regarding a specific coverage or some way to play it. And uh, so, we, in fact, we, we dug into that pretty hard uh, just, you know, over the last few practices. Michael Galkin, Dallas Morning News. Based on your experience, is it predictive? terms of 
I was asking you in January which players are going to make the second year jump. You can tell based on your time with that player. Sometimes does the guy surprise you? What ultimately dictates whether or not yeah. a guy makes that jump? That's a good question, I would say, because it's not every player. I would say that that is also true. But you sense um, after that year and you're done and you kind of give the after action, these are the things that you have to improve upon. And in my experience, the players who had the most awareness about how to improve, um, those are the ones that really dug in to find you know, the answers. Because it's not just as easy as like you know going to kindergarten, hello, I'm here, I'm sitting in the seat, how do I get better? It's a matter of, I also saw that in my game. I also saw that. So usually when you want to visit with a player as you're setting the course for the off season, not only do you give them some ideas about some things you could improve upon, but for instance, say, Michael, it was, um, you know, I thought you needed to improve on, you know, guarding a tight end and man to man, but you also want to be a better blitzer. I would say, let's work both things because you saw something in your game that you wanted to improve upon. So I think that's very valuable too, to make sure it's not just what I think, but it's also what the player thinks. And so when you combine those two things, that's usually when you see the big jumps happen. Some of them are developmental, like uh, in size or strength, you know, like usually at this level, nobody's gonna get, you know, too much faster as it goes from year one to year two, but your skills can get better. And that's usually the thing that you find. And there's been a few players this year that I've seen that jump take place because they, you know, had a real plan of how they're gonna go attack the off season. And some of them, you could get better in a shorter time for, um, you know, for one like uh, Mukuamu, it was going to take all through camp of some of the things that I wanted to see. So he was making all the steps and, you know, ticking the box, so to speak. But it wasn't until I saw the preseason games that I was going to say it's come full circle on his improvement. So some are smaller where by the end of the offseason, did you get better at this? And some are longer range. Long answer, but I think it's kind of points out mm-hmm. the development and the improvement that goes on. It's not one size fits all. Iron Seal, what we're starting to talk about. Obviously, you know what a great defense looks like just from your days in Seattle. You're talking to you know Demarcus Lawrence and Anthony Brown, the guys have been around. And this is the best defense they've been on. How good can this defense be? Well, I think as you're you know kind of moving forward, each year's new, and uh, it's not an encore. Like I said, it's a new set, a new group. But what I do love about this group, I think we've got a deep crew, and we are going to roll in hard. Um, we've got depth at defensive line, we've got depth at uh, linebacker, we've got depth at safety, and we've got some guys that can really go. So by pushing that tempo and that pace of how we want to go and play and be physical, uh, I think we've got the ball hawking mentality. I think we've just got to keep pushing that standard of what we want to do together. And that's what I've seen uh, through training camp, and that's why uh, heading into this week, you know, I am so excited because I think of what we can become now. Like most things, you got to go prove it, and it doesn't happen, you know, in a you know, one week or two weeks, it's going to be over the long haul. But I think this is showing that they can be a crew that can get it on for the long haul. What is that? What is that? What does get it on? What, what, I think get it, it on. goes into what does our tackling look like? How do we create takeaways? You know, those are the things that when you communicate better as people, I hope when you watch us practice, you can hear us pre-snap, post-snap, the communication, the calls, the very best defenses I've been a part of. Not only did they out hit people and took the ball, but they were able to talk through pre and post snap, this is the alerts that's come. Hey Dan, watch for this. You know, you can see where the receiver is. So that to me is the the final piece. There's a lot of guys that can go hard. There's a lot of guys who have ball skills. But when you put the whole thing together, from the communication player to player on the field, to me that's where the special groups come from. So top five defense, you just from. I think we'd ha- we'll have to see how well we can communicate into that. But I think we have. I'm not a predictor of that. So um, you know, I see better than I hear. All right, so I'd rather uh, show you what we can be, all right, than talk about it. All right, Ooh, show all right, me. Getting where you at. Sometimes you got to just forget the bread comes and hit me right in the face, all right? Todd Autry, ESPN. David still has broken 100, by the way, in case you're wondering. Um, is this the fastest defense that you've had? We do have – it's probably one of the fastest and the longest, um, you know, in terms of length of safeties and linebackers with this kind of size and this kind of length. Uh, the play speed is where the – the fast comes from and uh, the more you know it the faster you can play and there may be some guys who can run 4-4 at different positions but uh, yeah I would say this group I'd I'd put up with anybody in terms of uh, the speed to go play we've got a lot of speed and we've got a lot of length and so that's why that last piece I was speaking about our communication speed and length things he loves pre and post snap is going to be so critical Tom Watkins, Dallas, one of the news. 
you talk about these guys with the second year jump, would you say this is the best depth you've had in your two years here? Um, for this team? Yes, I would say that because I do feel um, there are some spots that we really have pushed it and I've seen the improvement take place. Defensive tackle is one um, that I've seen some guys who are really strong and stout. One of the areas we wanted to improve, quite honestly, was in the run defense inside to place more square and to play stronger. And I've seen mm -hmm. that. You've seen the jump from Bohani. You've seen it from Gallimore. I know he's not going one to two, but he missed so much time last year that I felt it's appropriate to put him into that bucket, even though he's not that. Does that make sense? So seeing guys like those two improve, Hill missed, you know, damn near an entire year with him coming back. So seeing some of those guys make these jumps at the defensive tackle spot, you know, is certainly something that I think is going to pay dividends for us. How does Calvin Joseph look from last year to this year? I'd say um, I always knew he had good speed, but I didn't know he had the strength. I thought that's one of the things at the line of scrimmage that uh, I really admire about his game is how strong he can play. And so in terms of matching up against a stronger, bigger receiver that we definitely see, he's one of the guys you'd want to have challenge at the line of scrimmage where certain guys you'd want to play off and uh, you know play the receiver and not allow him to use his size. Kelvin's strength is one that you'd want him to play at the line of scrimmage to battle some of the big guys. So I do like the different kind of versatility um, that we have on D to challenge different styles of players and different matchups. And that's kind of the fun part about the NFL week to week. You know, it might be these tight ends, might be this back, might be this receiver, but there's always all you know sorts of matchups. That's why I feel fortunate that we got a big, uh, deep crew that we're able to match up against a lot of different styles. Babe Law from Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Um, if you were going up against a guy that had 48 starts, you'd say, hey, this is a better guy. A lot of starts under his belt. It's almost comical. I mean, Brady has started 48 playoff games. <laughs> and when, when you get a guy like that, you can do two, you can throw your hands in the air and say, well, he's seen everything, so we'll stay static. Or, you know, so when you're game planning for something like that, how do, how do you approach that? Yeah, I think, you know, one, the guy's, you know, a fantastic competitor and just, you know, always seems to, you know, put his team in the position to win at the end. I think going against a competitor like that, you better be at your best at, you know, in the moments of the game where it's going to come right down to it because that's usually the separator. It's not the first down play, you know, or the second down play. It's the, you know, the within a two minute drive, it's in a red zone play to make sure that the intensity is just right and how to match up because you're right, a quarterback of, of his stature will have seen so many looks, but that's why, you know, all 11 and the plays and how do you go and play and match up to me that's where the real factors are and um, against any good competitor you can't beat yourself and uh, I think that's you know I went back to watch last year's game you wish you had some calls back we weren't quite ready to make some multiple checks within a call and now we are but um, we grew you know through the season but they won't be facing you know the same defense that they faced last year although there'll be some similar faces I would say our style has evolved quite a bit. Uh, Jory Epstein, USA Today. Micah talked last week about wanting to be the best player in the league, and he said to him he doesn't define the best player in the league as 20 sacks or a certain number of, or a certain statistic, but instead making everyone around him better, taking a team to the championship. How would you define what it would look like if Micah is the best player in the league? And, all, and related, how do you balance him keeping him, or raising everyone around him without distracting from him playing? Yeah, I think that's part of um, growing up as a competitor. We went through some of that last year when you're chasing plays as opposed to making plays. And yeah. uh, any good competitor will tell you, you always want to be in the spot to go make the play. But when you start chasing them to where I think I can make a play over there, but my responsibility is over here, that's the dangerous time. And I think you have to live through that on your way up to know that, well, I shouldn't have took that chance. And we've got enough good players here to put into the right spot. I can do my job at a really high level now. What's nice about our system is that we do put Micah in a lot of different roles where he can be a DB in some alignments, a, a defensive end, or, or a linebacker. So having that flexibility is a big piece of it. But I think he's right to say sometimes we can all get so stat driven that you can forget what's the most important is helping Winning. the team win. And uh, the best of the best that I've been around have had an excellent defense. And uh, it would be hard pressed to say on a defense there could be one person that would carry the team. But one person playing their role really well can affect all the others. And I think that's probably what Mike was referring to. And I think um, that's a real sign for him having an awareness to know uh, there's a lot of good players here that can make some plays. And he's going to make his fair share just by his relentless nature. But he doesn't have to go make a play that's not his. And I think that's 
you know, one of the real steps you make. And you don't know that until you can go make some mistakes and learn from them. I wish I could tell you what it feels like to be in his shoes and make all sorts of kind of plays, but that certainly is not the case. You know, for me growing up, I have appreciation for what he can do, but I want to make sure it's within the guidelines of the system. To, to have what you described earlier as a deep crew that rolls hard, that would seem to require a cultural buy-in of, I'm a linebacker, but I'm not going to play my 60 yep. snaps. I'm a defensive lineman, and I think I should play 40 or 50, but I'm going to play my 25, 30. How do you build that and, and get that buy-in from players to, 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 so that when you're rolling guys in, yep. they, they it's are It's a great question. Yeah. And, it's, and it's not easy because uh, – Every good competitor wants to play all the time. That and, uh, is the truth. Our job is to try to find what things you can do really well and then try to feature them into those roles. And so when we do that and we see guys match up, we try to highlight that and illustrate that to say, hey, this is one thing that this man can do really well. Like you're going to see that, you know, eventually with Cox guarding tight ends and um, JK is already someone that does that now. Or, you know, this guy on a blitz or as a situational pass rusher. So we try to highlight those roles that you can have. And maybe it's harder early because those roles aren't defined. And it, uh, But as you get into the season, hey, this is exactly what the team needs from you. And uh, we did an exercise on that today as the defense where what you thought your role was. And then by the time the meeting ended, but this is also what everybody else needs from you. And uh, it's not always what you think at the start. This is what I can do, but this is what everybody else needs from you. So it is a challenge, um, but the more that you're connected, the more you push, uh, once we get into game day, it just comes down to what do we need to do to help win this game. Are you laminating it for them again this year? We are, yes. And so it was, uh, I did that last year. And it was a good reminder for me. I probably did that exercise too early last year where we didn't even know each other well enough yet. And so now that we've been under the same roof for a year, so many of us, we have a much better uh, understanding of one another, how to push one another. And so I would expect the results on this year's sheet would look a lot different than last mm -hmm. year. So it's a good lesson yeah. for me to say, you can't establish roles before you're ready to. And now we are. And Rob Phillips, Dallas Cowboys We're Sam early in training camp, Sam Williams talked about trying to add more tools to his toolbox. Yep. Where, where have you seen him grow maybe specifically since from now until? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say um, the area that I thought he's improved um, was really in the run game first, um, where you know, when you come into the NFL, new techniques, new positions, how to play, we knew he could run. You know, and like he's got physical traits to run and to rush. So I thought I saw less in the real improvement in the run game. Uh, the second piece, you know, for my exploring with him, can we put him over a guard and rush to that spot? And now that I saw that's another dimension to his game because he does have enough strength to do that. Not only can he play defensive end, but he can also line up, you know, over a guard and rush in that space. So the more guys you have that can do that and have that kind of versatility, I think that's a big fit. We'll go with Todd and finish up with David. You feel like you can't get rid of this Brady guy? <laughs> <laughs> Where do we start? No. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I do have a lot of respect, um, you know, for the way that he plays. Anybody who can do something at a really high level over the course of a long period, um, you know, certainly earned my respect. And we've seen it across other sports. Um, but, you know, he's certainly, the, you know, the gold standard of what excellent could look like year in and year out and uh, certainly brings out the best in everybody. Well, that's one. Counterintuitive. Can you, can you be too creative? or too diverse? Does there have to be a discipline to yes. it? Yes, I know exactly where you're heading, and you can be. Uh, if you cross the line of, uh, you may have heard the term, you're trying to be too cute. Uh, at some point, you also got Kellen to Moore. line up and go get after somebody. And so by over, I think it's kind of what we are talking about earlier, do you need to have too many looks for this quarterback? At the end of the day, you also have to play really fast and really aggressive. So I think there is a balance to that. Physical. Usually it goes into the form of this guy's or a look. This could look like this, could look like this. But if it is slowing the player down, our players is what I'm saying, then it should be something that we shouldn't have up. Because I think at the end of the day, there's still going to be a lot of plays thrown to people in space where you have to go tackle. And that doesn't have anything to do with the disguise. It has to do with our execution. So it's a great question and one that you always, or through my career, you always had to you know, keep track of, make sure, hey, keep the main thing, the main thing. And uh, that's our tackling, our ball hawking, our out hitting. And the disguise is part of it, but uh, you better make sure you play to your play style first mm. and then add in the other wrinkles. And usually if you're trying to do too much, um, you're not doing the things that you're really exceptional at. And uh, 
all you guys became exceptional writers and so that's where your stuff is if you try to do too many things that are not that something would would not go so well and so keep the main thing the main thing is usually a, a good way to keep you know yourself on track thank you all right you guys have a good one see you all right man i i absolutely I, i'm sorry I, I i've got the man crush for dan quinn who is truly a teacher i love this that he's got a deep crew and we are going to roll that needs to be the quote that uh we need to stick on to um he talks about the second year um growth of being you know last year we just got here barely knew each other's name but you'll see tremendous growth from the first year to the second year as people start to really get into understanding what's expected, what's the philosophy, and so on, and definitely is excited about the way the defensive line has come on, talking about Tristan Hill and even Quentin Bohannon and stuff, and feels like they're going to be better to stop the run. And they truly do need to be because that has been our Achilles heel for way too long is being able to stop the run, especially when the playoffs come through. The Dallas Cowboys are blessed to have Dan Quinn. And if we're going to be successful, we need this defense to be there too. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in about an hour for our live stream. Peace.